All right, so now we are ready to start working in the first department, which is layout. And uh, as usual, we're going to add the gray light base node. And so we're going to work on uh, seven shots now. Um, so we can set this to seven. And uh, we do need cameras. And uh, for funsies, we can add a little bit extra space here to this. And uh, this is set to layout. There is a, a manifest uh, department that you can use. Uh, so what the manifest layer can do, for instance, if if you want to set up um, sort of empty groups for uh, empty prims for whatever is going to be in each shot and stuff like that uh, for other artists, um, you could do that, for instance. Uh, but in most cases, start with the layout. All right, so we are ready to create our template. So the first thing we uh, need to do is to set up all these shots. And uh, similar to what we did with the assets, uh, we are going to pick a shot here and select it. And uh, now we have that. Of course, this is a little bit tedious to do if you have many. So you can, if you do, select uh, all of them. And uh, we'll just select all of these here. Um, it will uh, do it for you in the order you selected them. Uh, there will be a render cam. Um, in there, but it's not a proper render cam. It's basically just there so we can see the um, the uh, uh, background image as we uh, flip here. So we have all these cameras, and um, we would like to line these cameras up to something. And uh, so we have our uh, trusty reference node here. And so we are going to bring in the scan. So I'm just going to call this environment or env. And we're going to load this thing. And so there is an environment scan here, and that comes from the app um, uh, Scaniverse that is free uh, to use. And um, it's been um, modified a little bit just to have a ground plane and stuff. Uh, but we'll bring that in and we can see that it shows up here and it has all these uh, combined scans into it and the uh, materials and this added seabed as well. And so it is uh, basically this uh, little beach uh, break uh, with these uh, uh, kind of nice uh, rocks and stuff that we have here. And so if we go to our first, first shot here and we'll just set our render cam, uh, we would need to line this up to the scan. And so we can do that uh, by going into um, wireframe. And of course, we actually don't see, really see the, the plate. So a better way to do it is to go hidden line invisible. And so now you got a little bit, uh, now it's a little bit better. And so for this camera, um, you know, one thing, the way you could do it is you could, you know, tie it to this uh, and then you basically, um, if you know the focal length of the camera, you would set that and um, I think th this one is uh, like 77. And then now you would essentially sort of try and line this scan up. And uh, once you have a feature sort of lined up, you know, we have these two poles here. Uh, so once we have one of them sort of line up with the plate, in Solaris, wherever you select and tumble, that's where it's going to tumble from. So then I can use that point to sort of line uh, the other stuff up. Now, this is a moving camera. And uh, normally, uh, you would use tracking for cameras. Uh, so in the reference or in the transfer folder, I've actually exported all the cameras uh, for you to use. So um, we are actually uh, going to um, ignore this camera. and. Uh, I'm just going to drag and drop uh, the cameras in here uh, and it will automatically uh, work. And in the file pattern here, we can go to cameras and we can select uh, sort of the first shot here, um, Stormy. And so now if I browse here, uh, it should line up uh, pretty well. And um, please make sure that you always have this uh, button here toggled. This button, so if you don't have that button, like you could, um, let's say that you're you're looking on this frame and now you're switching shots and all of a sudden you don't see a plate, right? It's empty and uh, you're confused, like why isn't it working? Well, the, the reason is that we're standing on a frame that is, you know, further away from where this <laughs> shot has ended. Um, and, but if you press this button, the timeline will automatically be adjusted to the correct frame range per shot. So um, I have already set up these uh, references, so I am just gonna, like a TV chef, I am going to um, delete these cameras and just paste in the uh, proper reference imports for each one of these. Uh, right, so now I have uh, added all the reference nodes and they're all uh, just loading from that same transfer uh, folder. And so if we jump around here, we should see that it should line up with the scan pretty well. 
Uh, this one is a full CG shot, so this one uh, uh, is not lined up to anything. If we look at this, um, we we sort of realize that there is no water, so we're going to add a, uh, a water, and uh, we're just going to add a grid. So we're going to call this grid water, and uh, um, this import path prefix is the same as pin path, so here we just want to call it water. Uh, Alright, so we want to make the water a little bit bigger and um, dive inside and just say how big this uh, should be. We probably want the water to sort of uh, come up to these rocks. So you can see from the scan here that this is sort of where the water level was. So let's, uh, whoops. So let's uh, bring this up a little bit. Another thing we uh, might want to add for all the shots is uh, the boats and so sometimes the boats are added by another department and stuff like that um, but uh, to show you uh, how it's done we are going to add the boats and so we can go to any of our toolkit nodes and open the publish history and uh, in the assets we can find the boat look dev and do copy path and we want to do the sublayer node and that is copied to the clipboard and now i can just uh, paste it here and uh, if we look at that, we should have the boat. So I'll plug that in here, just call this boat. I'm actually going to give me even more space here. Uh, so we want to have two boats. And uh, so we'll, we can duplicate. And uh, we'll just make sure that the boat is selected. And we want to do two copies. And uh, the first one is going to be the first duplicates. Uh, so now we see we have two boats. And we can use an edit node to so I move these boats. We're gonna sort of move it over here. Maybe something like that is nice. And uh, we can also go to this uh, uh, this shot here if we look at the render cam and kind of see, you know, how much do we see of that boat? Uh, where is it gonna come in and stuff? So that looks uh, pretty nice to me. And for the second boat, we're gonna turn it around. So I'm sort of just gonna spin it at 180 degrees here. Uh, look that you're happy with the placement uh, of the boats uh, per shot. Um, so maybe in this one we want to see the boat here in the background and um, so we can do another edit node here. And uh, sort of move it over here somewhere. And maybe in this one uh, we want to move it a little bit closer. So we do an edit node here. And so this is sort of the beauty that it's sort of automatically switching for us. And you can always um, sort of do a preview window from where you are here. And uh, and all right, and then we have this shot. And this is also the beauty that it's always called render cam. So you can always, you don't need to switch. It will always say render cam. Uh, all right, I think we're pretty happy with that. And so I think we're ready to export this um, as a layout for all the shots. And uh, we are going to set this to USD. And uh, we don't have to really do anything here. And uh, this time we want to use the, the frame range. And speaking of which, so in the base node, we have these settings that if it can find a plate on disk, it will take that range and add it. This is why uh, the frame range automatically changes for us and why it can load these plates. Now, for shots that doesn't have it, like this one, which is a full CG shot, you will see that this will default to 1100, which is what we've set up here in the base node. So it will fall back to that value. And so we could change that if we want to have a shorter shot, maybe this should be just 50 frames maybe. But we can also go to that context and we can override the frame range here and just say 1050. And now that is active. All right, so now we're pretty happy with this layout and uh, we are going to export all the layout changes. If there is a case where um, you have um, some tracking markers or some guides you want to add uh, for layout, uh, you can add that too. Um, so as an example, we'll add a, a cube here and uh, we just make it really uh, big. We'll look at it as well. All right, and so we can just uh, <clears throat> we 
I'm just gonna move this uh, <laughs> over here so we, we know that it's there. And um, the thing is that this cube will now show up. If people render, it will show up in people's renders. And uh, that we don't like. So but we do have this automatic thing called guides here. And it's only available in the layout when you're doing layout. So if you want to take this cube and you, um, you put it in guides, um, and you have to name it, so we'll name it box. So what will happen on export is that it will be set to purpose guides. And so when rendering, uh, guides will not be rendered, but they can still be viewed. And the way people can view them is with these uh, goggles here. Um, so here you can select um, what you want to see, and people can select, you know, render proxy or guide. And uh, yeah, normally everything is, is set as proxy or render. So, um, but then people can choose if they want to see it or, or not in the viewport and if they want to render it or not. Uh, so we are ready to export. And uh, for the output, you know, same as always, you can name this if you want. We only have one output, so uh, we don't need to really dig into these settings here. So we're just going to do preview, and we can see all these layouts are going to come out and the different frame ranges for each. We are going to submit. And it will lock down your uh, Houdini session while it uh, exports, uh, but it's uh, pretty fast. And you can choose to export in background. The problem with that is that it has to version up your file every time it does uh, an output. So in this case, it would version up your file seven times. Uh, you know, th this took, you know, 30 seconds or whatever. So I don't think it's a big deal. All right, so let's uh, jump to the next step.